Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Building Character, this fine Friday afternoon here at the Game Trade Media Studios in Timonium, Maryland, where we take a character, so Building Character is where we take a different RPG game, and we're still running through the uh, Fantasy Flight Games Star Wars Force and Destiny role-playing game, part of their Star Wars RPG um, universe, and uh, doing our little adventuring party of Force-sensitive characters uh, Jedi uh, attuned uh, characters, which you can see three of the party members are already together on our spinner. <clears throat> they look amazing. You got uh, Netflix there with the blaster, the rogue looking guy. Um, then you've got, uh, who's this other one here? Uh, Slick Starwire, the, the Dorosian Sentinel artisan guy, the blue the blue headed guy. And then uh, Tracklin Torfodian who is the uh, lightsaber-wielding, purple-haired human. So, but today, we are going to be making an Athorian. I don't have a miniature because I forgot it at home because I'm that guy. I've been painting them at home and I didn't bring them in today. Uh, right? But uh, we have an image. Do we have an image yeah. of the character? This, so this is the character that we're going to be using. This is the miniature of the character. Um, it, the character that we have has a red robe scheme going on, so it's going to be a different uh, look. But in the staff there, that uh, metallic uh, like headpiece to it is going to be more crystal looking because it's going to be a kyber crystal, uh, which will be really cool as that'll be like the focus, uh, energy focus point for this character to hunt down Jedi artifacts and uh, lore, so that's going to be pretty cool. But uh, what we need for that character, uh, is there a way to make that a split screen so people can yeah. see? Perfect. Awesome, because uh, we got to visually come up with a name with the, for this character, uh, which is always one of the most fun parts of this, where you guys come up with the names and we just put them together, which will be really fun. So let's go to... Uh, let me join in here with you guys in the in the group, so we can chat about that. All right. But what's everybody doing today? Has anybody seen Solo yet? I haven't seen it yet. I'm supposed to watch it this weekend, so I'm pretty stoked for it. Um, but if you have seen it, please tell us all about it. I'm kidding. No spoilers. <laughs> All right. Hey, Nick, Brian, Walter. Everybody's up in the chat today. All right. Very cool. But yeah, we hope everybody's doing well. Um, and if you haven't seen Star Wars, uh, Solo, a Star Wars story yet, uh, go out and check it out. It, it looks really good. And it's how, how awesome is it that we live in a time where we can get a Star Wars movie every year? It's so cool. And... Uh, and a, and a superhero movie of such high caliber for the most part every year and sometimes multiple times a year. We, we live in great times to be fans of things that we've all, we grew up on. Um, but so, back to the character. Tell me more about your comic tattoos. Nick, I've got the, uh, I got a Marvel sleeve, as you can see on here. Got a Deadpool, Nightcrawler, Teleporting, Archangel, Captain America, Wolverine, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Deadpool, and uh, up here I've got the Thing, and on my back I've got the Hulk. And uh, there might be a couple others that will eventually be added into this and then colored in and everything. And then this side over here, I think I'm going to start my D&D uh, &D sleeve. So all my fandom will be represented. Did it, did it, did it, did it. <laughs> all right, so I need a name, ladies and gentlemen, for the Ithorian mystic or whatever we decide that its class will be uh, because there are multiple different um, careers and specialization paths that we can choose from and there he is so that's the character right there I need I need from you all some uh, name suggestions all right hey Peter welcome back Peter uh, is from Maryland 
which is cool, right here, same place we are. Well, not same town or anything, but same state, state of confusion. But uh, all right, let's find these character types. So there are the counselors. Ooh, Koba Lello. There we go, correct feed. Uh, let's see, who else we got here? Tell me about your comic tattoos. We got that, Nick. We went through that. Uh, Nick has put down Koba Lello. Lilo. That's a cool name. So if you guys, we'll take some other suggestions, you know, because we like to get a big group of people's input on all that so that we can get a really good mix because sometimes we take different names. I think when we did uh, Tacklin, was it? Tracklin. I keep getting that wrong. Uh, when we did Tracklin Torfodian, uh, the Jedi character with the lightsaber, uh, that was two different people's suggestions, but only half of the names from each suggestion, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, if you guys could uh, throw down some more suggestions, that'd be awesome. I'm inviting people to come watch us as, I, as we do here. All right, we'll do that and back it up a little bit real quick. All right, so let's see who, what we got so far. We have got doo -doo 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 -doo. Rad Snazzy, Tino Astlin. That's a cool one right there, Tino Astlin. Tino Snazzy or Rad Astlin. Carl, that's my brother. My brother said Carl. Come on, Todd. You, you, you've seen enough Star Wars to know that that just isn't going to work for us. <laughs> I'm going to drop this in a group as well real quick. See if we can put it into a uh, <clears throat> Star Wars role playing. group. All right, come on now. Uh, I need some Star Wars RPG. No. Star Wars roll. No, it's not giving me anything there. All right. We'll just go Star Wars Legion. Building characters. There we go. All right. So some of the names have been really cool. Some of them look like they could make for a really good uh, mashup. Let's go with Vic Morad. Bill, that's a good one. Carl Tristan II. <laughs> I kind of like Vic Morad Snazi. That kind of sounds like... Uh, uh, do you, you guys remember, of course, um, the movie Dune uh, and the more deep and he's like and the the sonic blast of of his name, and I, I kind of feel like that um, Vic Morad Vaznazi kind of would have like because these characters, um, the Thorians, have like a as as being a hammerhead, they have this like under under their neck they can swell it out and do like a a sonic boom type thing and uh, I, I can imagine like a Jedi having that ability to, and, and enhancing it and stuff and uh, just his name alone could be deadly if pushed through so I like that what do you guys think Slagathor it's coming from Maggie over at uh, Greater Than Games Slagathor I like Vic Morad what do you think? Vic Morad Snazzy? Yeah, okay. That was uh, me talking to Leona, who walked in real quick to check the camera. So we're going to go Vic Morad. How are you spelling it? Uh, just like they have it here, V-I-K-M-O-R-R-A-D space S-N-A-Z-I. Snazzy. I like it. 
the character just sounds like, you know, it has some sort of mystic connection. Viknorad's Nazi. But of course, he probably just. That's probably what he ta- sounds like when he talks. Because the, you know, the Thorians don't really look like they have a mouth. Um, now we got to pick a career. So we have counselors. And um, the counselor focuses on the goal of achieving peace and harmony through positive discourse. Followers of this career try to avoid physical conflict whenever possible. Instead, they have faith in the force to fuel basic compassion in all sentient beings. Yeah, the name does have gravitas. That is true. Vic Morad Snazi, S N A Z I. Wow. So we have the counselor, the guardian. We've already got a guardian, I believe. That is what Tracklin is. Yep, Tracklin is a guardian. So we don't want to we don't want to uh, cross pollinate. We want to kind of get a good diverse. We have the mystic. Characters who follow the mystic career are typically born to accept this mantle from the time they first open their eyes. A strong connection to the Force colors their perception of the world surrounding them. They constantly perceive the ebb and flow of its energies between all living things. To many mystics, the Force is as important a guide and mentor as their family and trusted friends. It teaches them to trust their instincts more than any training or instruction, for those instincts come from the Force. So I, I really like the idea of this character, the Thorian, Vic Morad Snazi, as a mystic. But that's not my decision. That is y'all's. I'm just going to kind of, you want him to be a mystic. <laughs> um, and I believe, yeah, uh, so the next one is the Seeker and Net, who is uh, on the spinner there, the one with the, that kind of looks like the smuggler Han Solo-esque uh, miniature is a seeker uh, with a Pathfinder specialization. And so we we're not, we're not going to take the seeker. And then the next one is Sentinel, which is what the Doran, the blue-headed alien is, a Doran. So we're not going to take Sentinel. All right, so that's out. And the last one is the warrior. And that particular character, I feel, doesn't quite fit the warrior path. What up, Kurt? Hey, Mike Webb is watching. Yeah, I think um, Mystic is the way to go for this character. So uh, whoop, our Vic Morad Snazi uh, Ithorian Mystic is where we're going to walk with this guy or girl. Because Vic Morad could be a female, which is pretty awesome. And now we go into our specialization trees. So you, we have the mystic advisor. Not everyone who is skilled in the ways of the forest seeks to hold a position of tremendous authority. In fact, some believe they would find it too easy to abuse their unique abilities if they place themselves in a position of leadership. Instead, they choose to accept the advisor's role to ensure they cannot be corrupted by the lure of power. Others feel their advice too valuable to limit to one planet or region and wander the stars, sowing the guidance of the Force wherever they might go. So that's one option. The next one is the Makashi Duelist. The presence and showmanship that can come naturally to all mystics reflects itself in the way of a duelist. For practitioners of Makashi, Dominating a combat through one's presence is just as important as dominating it through martial prowess. And the Makashi duelist is the ultimate expression of that art. They have charm, cool, coordination, and lightsaber as additional career skills. That's kind of cool. If this is the character starting specialization, he may choose two of these skills. Um, That's kind of cool. And then there's also the seer. Some individuals are able to remain constantly aware of the Force's presence even as they go about their daily lives. They recognize its influence in the subtlest of ways. For them, minor ripples in the Force reveal deep meanings and forewarn of critical events for far into the future. However, this quality or quantity of information, particularly in environments filled with other sentience, can become overwhelming. So that's actually a really cool path as well. So of the three... The Makashi Duelist and the Seer seem to be the two that are, I think, would be the one that this particular character would lean towards. 
<laughs> Walter says we need a download of all these characters that are made. You're right, we do, Walter. So what do you guys think? A Makashi Duelist or a Seer as I drink my summertime lemonade? So good. Um, Makashi is M-A-K-A-S-H-I. So if you guys have any information that you think would be good to that, like they, what would be the reason behind um, a Makashi mystic or a seer mystic? Well, those are the two that I think this particular character is going to kind of fall under. Um, and as an example, let's give you some background on the characters that are already created and how this group has been brought together. The characters already created are uh, Netflix. I know that sounds amazing. Uh, Net is the is the smuggler looking guy, but he is also a force sensitive uh, Jedi type character. And his his thing is he is a seeker pathfinder who uh, basically his whole background is that he um, basically came from part of the privileged few. He's one with the Force. Uh, he is um, emotion and morality is enthusiasm and his weaknesses are obsession where he gets really focused on certain things but he has enthusiasm and everything he does he does with, you know, pomp and uh, he's really excited to be doing it. But the thing is, he comes from a family that was extremely wealthy. They, they ran one of the largest entertainment industries in the known universe. Uh, but he decided that that was not the path he wanted to take, that uh, the Jedi path was calling to him, and he, and he decided to walk it. Um, and he is the leader. Next we have, coming around the, the spinner there, is Tracklin. Tracklin is a um, Jedi uh, guardian who is also the uh, specialization tree of the Soresu Defender. And he basically is all about uh, mercy, but he's very cold towards others. That uh, Anybody that basically will bend the knee to a... Um, so like the Empire, he gives them like kind of a, this cold shoulder, but he has mercy towards individuals that are willing to stand up for themselves. And he also shows mercy over, there's a particular race. Uh, there's a species that he's extremely motivated in protecting, and that species um, was one that, because he used to be a member of the Empire, and now he has defected, uh, come to find out has, this, has uh, Jedi and Force sensitivities, uh, he helps uh, rescue this entire race of these like cute little creatures that are extremely t t attached to the Force. Uh, and as he uh, basically is living with them over a, a number of years, he becomes um, trained and mo even more attuned to the Force. And he is a guardian who is really, in my opinion, a bad but bad ace. Very cool character. And then finally, uh, we have. Slick Starwire, who is the Doran, the blue head guy right there, right in front. Uh, he is a Sentinel artisan. Uh, he is uh, also Force sensitive, based on the Force and Destiny rules here. But his thing is, is he's like this, like super techie me mechanic type. builds builds gadgets and gizmos, and has a lot of good computer knowledge. And the big thing is. Uh, yes, he knows that the Force exists. Yes, he believes that it is there. Yes, he knows that he has a connection to it. However, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't think that the force is what gives him his great mind and great abilities to make amazing items and uh, and gadgets and gizmos because uh, he thinks it's just him. But uh, obviously the force does assist in his great creations um, and the ability to maybe get something built really quick that is could get him and his companions out of trouble. And then the final piece to this puzzle uh, of the Jedi side of it, the Force Sensitives, is the Athorian Mystic, who is right there that you see. And uh, that paint job is amazing. I hope mine looks half as good. Um, and this character is going to be um, kind of like the guide, the moral compass, and also the one that has the staff with the kyber crystal that can help focus and locate potential Jedi artifacts to be brought back to the new Jedi Temple uh, to help rebuild the Jedi Order. 
and uh, that's kind of what this whole team has been put together. They're like this outline. They gotta, you know, don't so much talk about the the, the Force and being a Jedi, but you know, walk a, a, a path that allows you to skirt uh, the smuggling realm and the, but yet maintain your Jedi um, path as well, so that you don't, you know, fall into the dark side. Because you know, I think there's a really a very thin line that they might be running uh, to retrieve sometimes maybe through back alley deals ancient artifacts to help rebuild the Jedi Order. So Seer? You guys think Seer? Looks like Seer's got it. It's three for Seer from Nick, Kurt, and Walter. Uh, Peter says Duelist. The Duelist is really cool, but I do think that the Seer is the one that's going to be the most like attuned to this party. So yes, I like that. Good job, everybody. The Seer. Now I gotta find the race of Ethorians to get their stats, uh, their basic stats. If you guys have these books as well, please help out by throwing up page numbers if you know where where to look, so we can uh, get all these beautiful stats taken care of. All right, there's the Natolan, da 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 da, the Keldor. All right. I do not see a Thorian in this in this particular book. No. So that means he's probably in one of the others. But you know what's good about that? The interwebs. We can do. Um, Thorian species. Base stats. Let's see what that comes up with. That doesn't. That nope. <laughs> Curses. Fantasy flight. Let's see what the hell if that gives it to us. There we go. That helped. And. We are looking at, oh, that's like a, um, curses. See if this will work. Oh, shoot. I need your guys' help. <laughs> if you can find it before I do. All right. Um, all right, there we go. The races. And this has got all of them on this PDF. Uh, Gamorians. There he is. The Athorian. Brawn 1. Presence or Agility 2. Intellect 2. Cunning 2. Willpower 3. And Presence 2. That's not bad. Willpower is probably going to be really important for this character, and so is um, intellect. I'm, I'm guessing, maybe even cunning. The wound threshold is 11 plus brawn, and strain is 11 plus will. And they get a starting 100 XPs. Begin the game with one free rank in knowledge xenology. All right, we'll give them one rank in Knowledge Xenology. They still may not train Knowledge Xenology above rank two during character creation. Nature Lore Thrones ne negate one setback dice when making survival checks. All right, very cool. There we go. There we have it. So what do, what do you guys think? You think this character is going to be the moral compass to our con our, our group? The... Uh, we have to come up with like a name for these guys, you know, like you, their call sign. You got Rogue One, you got Red Squadron, all these cool call signs. I'm wondering like our Phoenix Squadron, you know, what, what would the call sign to this group be? There's going to be one more character made beyond these, and it's going to be a female Wookiee who's kind of like the muscle. So, and that would be really cool. Um, all right, so back to the Mystic Seer. Ra -da -da. What's, what's absolutely, Kurt? 
Kurt's talking absolutes. Only Sith speak in absolutes. <laughs> I like the idea. I like the idea that this character met up with um, Netflix, and he's like, he's like the counterpart to Netflix. Where Netflix is kind of like a roguish Jedi smuggler type character, and this guy's still kind of like follow the path, the Force will guide us, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the moral compass, yes. But they, like, have a history, and then they meet up with the party. Like, they're, to me, them two, like, they've met up in the past, and they're, then they meet up with the rest of their party. Yeah, if you were to, like, if we were to come up with, like, a whole, like, true backstory to this entire group, I would almost feel like the Ithorian was part of the Jedi Council, uh, not so much a, um, a master on the Council, because, you know, the setting I'm kind of envisioning this is post to the last Jedi and they're rebuilding the whole Jedi order. And, uh, this guy, the Thorian was kind of like able to sense which new recruits had the best potentials. And he saw this in Netflix, but Netflix is always like, no, I'm going to do it this way. I'm very rebellious, but I'm not going to be a bad guy. I'm just going to walk the line. And, uh, then they basically put the you know the higher ups in the organization decide they need to put together this this roguish group of Jedi you know uh, outliers that uh, to go and find these artifacts and of course Netflix is like I can do that that's going to help make my name uh, you know make me a known within this organization within the Jedi Order and then the uh, they're like well we're going to send somebody with you to help you know that has the ability to find these items and it turns out to be this authorian that he had history with yeah. that he was always rebelling against even though he took the the knowledge and the training that was given to him by this character but he always was still kind of like I don't want to I don't want to listen to you yeah. <laughs> and now they're together on this whole mission yeah. uh, the tactical archaeology group or tag the Jedi Council is asking a lot. You're right, Kurt. They're they're asking a lot of these these roguish characters. All right. Charm. Charm. Coercion. Wow, the mystics get coercion. Knowledge lore. Knowledge outer rim. Perception and vigilance. That's um, some pretty interesting stat lines. A lot of, like I said, yeah, a lot of intelligence, a lot of will, will stuff, in there. Uh, two of these, and get one for your ranking each. Uh, that's interesting. Seers acquire discipline, knowledge, lore, and survival and vigilance, as part of their thing too. They get to pick two of those. Um, I think discipline is a good one, and vigilance for one there is really good. They get a rank in three of these skills without spending experience. All right, so we'll go lore because this individual is going to have to have at least something going on in the lore because he's going to have to have the knowledge of, you know, legends speak of this temple that was, uh, you know, lost due to a, um, that was a ancient temple on a, on a, in a meteor uh, field, and the, the meteor field got hit, and the, the, the one meteor got launched off into space. But uh, there's rumor that it still floats like a ghost ship out there. Um, we'll go with charm and perception before spending any points, and that looks pretty good right there. And then, we also gotta come up with the morality stuff for this guy. Like, what are the things that are keeping him going? What is it? There we go, determining morality. All right. Um, Leona, can I pull you away from the computer real quick, please? I just need 2d10.
all the dice. Oh, oh let's take one of these. Yes. I'll take them. Here, I'll take it. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Dice. Goblin dice. <laughs> all right. Here we go. So, 2d10 to discern what our morality is. What, our, what is our emotional strength for the, um, the Thorian mystic seer? And we got a 75. And 75 says ambition. An ambitious character sets a lofty goal for himself and then strives to accomplish it. The harder the task, the more willing the character is to take it on. And the greater the triumph when he succeeds. Makes perfect sense that uh, this is a very challenging task to go and find these, um, these items. And here we are now to, uh, to go back and retrieve them. So, yeah, that's, that's a pretty ambitious uh, motivation or morality. Uh, strength is ambition. And your emotional weakness. Let's find out what this seer's emotional weakness is. And I can't wait to role play these guys, or at least one of them. Uh, I actually was taught strengths and or weaknesses. Now he's going to have multiple weaknesses, which is interesting. Like maybe because the seer is so attuned, and like it says in the description of seers, that if there's multiple sentient forces around when they're, you know, seeing the, the living force, that it can be very, like, a bombardment of emotions and colors and all sorts of stuff. Maybe some of that has affected him. Let's find out. 23. So 23 is fear. The line between caution and fear is a thin one. Sometimes the character spends too much time concerned about the potential problems of a situation to act in that situation at all. At other times, his caution causes him to flee when danger presents itself, though bolder action might reap real rewards. Wow. That is... What do you think of that? Because fear is leads to the dark side. Maybe, maybe he has a close... You know, like he's literally been walking the line. I like that. Yeah. I actually think it would be really cool because, like, again, if he and Net like have this past, Netflix is all about like what is right. Yeah. And yeah. And it's like, and and Net and and, and Net is very enthusiastic, mm -hmm. and you know, like a go getter and rushes in and just rushes bullheadedly into things. And this one is going to be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> We gotta take this. We gotta take this. He's, again, the moral compass, but the moral compass to the point of, it's like, man, you're so scared of everything, you know. And then secondly, a um, fifty, which is obsession. Sometimes interest in something can turn to obsession if not tem tempered with reason. The character can slip into obsessive state. And I, I think that also uh, goes with the ambition. He, he becomes obsessed, he or she becomes obsessed with seeking out these artifacts and may get a clue to another one, but is already obsessed on the one that they've already, you know, this one over here we can go get now. It's, a, it's, it's, it's right there, right in front of us, but he's so obsessed or she's so obsessed with this potential one that's right in front of them or that they've been trekking towards for a while, not, not taking the eyes off the prize to see that there's, another, there's some low-hanging fruit over here. You know what I mean? Yes. Like they don't want to do anything besides the thing that they're really driven or obsessed with. Yeah, absolutely. What? Jason says, Ithorians have a huge emotional weakness. Instead of crying, they burst a goop from their eyes. It's disgusting. <laughs> Is this mission life path from the council or self-determined? Uh, Peter, I, I would almost say that um, maybe a little bit of both, um, because this one, the Thorian has the um, uh, knowledge lore, and maybe that's part of his obsession, is that he's been just delving into all these old tomes that they've been coming across, and different uh, holocron or holocrons and all these other things, uh, and learning more and more about the lore and history of the Jedi, and that there are these artifacts out there. He presents it to the council 
the council d- does their thing and then decides, yes, this is a worthy path to the betterment of the future of our the Jedi's existence, you and your companions, yes, go do this thing. It's I think like that, that's really good. They have the blessing. They have the blessing of the council, but it's not necessarily like the exactly council is deciding every move or something. Exactly, the the council has blessed it, and though the council may still get knowledge to, that they'll send forward to the team, the, it's the Athorian. It it is literally Vic um, Vic uh, Morad, who is the one that is. The bookworm, the no, you know, just always getting the information because he's so obsessed with learning new, new, uh, new lore and uh, the locations of artifacts. And they, yeah, I like it. That's a that's really a cool meat to the bone on this character. But we have a hundred experience points that we can spend now on making this character even better. So let's take a look at that. All right. And as a mystic seer, we also have their path here. They have plausible deniability, know somebody, grit, some good stuff here. I think um, their intellect, though, this particular character's intellect needs to be bumped up to three which is going to cost 30 experience points out of the 100, which knocks it down to 70, which is crazy. And then I also feel like lore should be a uh, rank 2, which would be 2 times 5 is 10, so takes it down to 60 to pip him up one. And I kind of feel like coercion may not really be this character's thing. What do you think? Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. What do you guys think? But also, Leona, what do you think? Because if he's got the scaredy cat thing, he may not be so good at coercing people to give them, give him the things he, he really wants. For, yeah, you know? I agree. I but, think he might be easily coerced. <laughs> I think so too. With with the like the idea of knowledge, giving him more knowledge, he may be coerced into going down different paths that other than what he may have initially wanted to go. Yeah. Um, but I feel that he also may be extremely cunning or have great perception by constantly reading the signs of the force and reading the signs of of. Uh, the lore that he's been studying that he may have increased perception especially okay. focused on that stuff so I'm going to pip him up on that takes us down to 50 and then now on the mystic um, seer path it would take 5, 10, 15, 20 30 40 50 yeah so it, got to make like a Xerox copy of the different pages and then just like pip, 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 done. There, there we go. All right. And it's his weapon. He has a holdout blaster. He's not so much proficient in it, but he also has the staff. What would you guys call that staff? If you look at that staff and imagine that the head of that staff is a kyber crystal that is a focus for uh, attuned to Jedi artifacts, like the ed- energies or items that are have been energized through use of the f- with the Force, um, be it book, item, anything. Uh, what would you call something like that? That staff is pretty cool. Hey, Chris, what's up? What do you got here? Is this? Da, 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 da. But some of the other council know of his fear. Absolutely, yeah. The the, the council do, do know of his fear, but they might think that by sending him and and basically giving him permission to go and seek these things out, he may be find a way to overcome his fears, or be con- possibly consumed by them. The, you know, the the force is 
foggy. <laughs> His future is. Um, and feel that he may overcome it. Yeah, Walter, perfectly. And then Chris is here. But yeah, so if you guys have any uh, like name ideas for that staff uh, that he carries, that is the like the beacon or the the seeker of artifacts, uh, that'd be pretty cool. It's, I just think he's a cool character to add to this team. Yeah. And once the whole team is together, we're get, going to get Jeff Hall from Games and Stuff is going to come up and he's going to run us through a game with these characters and we'll see what their first mission, how it goes. Is it successful or do they fail utterly and die? <laughs> I think this team could work together really well, but the, some of the characters are have strong personalities. <laughs> I agree. Uh, they do have strong... It could kind of go lots of different ways. It really could. And especially when you give the player... Because we don't even know who the players are going to be at this point. But if you give the players, like, hey, you're playing <coughs> a Slick Starwire. Um, we don't really know what his real first name is. They just call him Slick. Uh, but he is, you know, this guy who doesn't... He, yes, he's Force-sensitive. Yes, he can manipulate the Force. However, dot .com, he is... Uh, someone that just feels like he, you know, he's arrogant. He's like, the force doesn't help me. I'm super smart and super mechanically inclined, and I can do this stuff without the force. However, as he's doing something, he always has to roll a force check to make sure he can succeed. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, the force don't guide me. And then uh, Tracklin, yeah, Tracklin is a is an interesting uh, personality in this group. With him being the only one that carries a lightsaber was basically trained almost all of his Jedi powers were trained by a race of Force-sensitive, like, Care Bears is kind of what I'm thinking. <laughs> you know, I don't know, you know, haven't really thought of, like, what the, those particular characters or creatures we would look like. named the species. What's that? I said we have not named the species yeah. that he's obsessed with, but... Yeah. I figure they're small. Yeah, I, I would think so, creatures. too. Like, Manchi Cheese. Or something like that. If, you, if for those of you that remember the Manchichi stuffed animals, little they're not Ewoks, but you know, close. Um, but yeah, and the fact that he is considered a warrior among those people. <laughs> and then of course Net, you know, he he himself is just that, you know, spoiled little rich kid who decided that he didn't want. He wanted to make a name for himself, and that he, because he is gifted with uh, the force sensitivity, and goes and uh, trains to be a Jedi. But even then, he starts rebelling because it, he's so, you know. Yes, he can use a lightsaber. Yes, he's not too bad with it. However, he is so focused on, uh, obsessed with being the best, one of the best uh, blaster pistol uh, shooters in the world or in the universe. He puts all his focus on being the best person with a pistol using the force to guide his hand and all that stuff so it's a it's an interesting uh set of personalities to, to throw together and i think when you give these to players and they take on those personalities that the dynamic of rp of role playing will, will make this an, a, an amazing opportunity to see some fun characters come together to succeed or fail in a mission as set forth hopefully by by mr jeff hall and that will be a lot of fun. So this character, for all y'all, is, is basically done. So Vic Murad Snazi, the mystic seer, uh, built out of the Force and Destiny uh, RPG, um, Star Wars RPG, by Fantasy Flight Games. You can find out more about Fantasy Flight at fantasyflightgames.com slash Star Wars RPG and get more, lots of cool more information. And, uh, yeah, if you aren't playing this, Give it a shot. If you like role-playing games and you like Star Wars, why not? Give it a shot. And uh, tell us all about your characters that you're building. And uh, we hope that they're pretty awesome as well. And if you need any help, you can always say, Hey, I got this character idea. What do you guys think? And, you know, the group, uh, the, the community will definitely come forth and give you amazing information, names and ideas. And sometimes they'll give you some that'll just make you want to go, What? what, what, what? <laughs> but it's always part of the fun of being a part of this community. Um, 
I'm going to be talking with Jeff soon to figure out how we're going to make this happen. But until then, this has been Building Character. I'm Rick, and we will see you at the game store. Or at the time. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching Game Trade Media. Before you go, we wanted to tell you about our new book, The Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games, which is available to pre-order right now. You obviously love tabletop gaming, so do we. And this book provides a look at the history of all the different types of tabletop games, from card games like Magic the Gathering to role-playing adventures like Dungeons & Dragons, to the most classic of board games like Clue or The Game of Life. Right. We've also got interviews with a lot of industry veterans like Peter Atkinson and influencers like Matt Mercer, plus discussions with collectors and gamers of all kinds. The book also discusses the impact of crowdfunding on the industry and looks into why board gaming is, is experiencing such a boom right now. We put a lot of love, a ton as a matter of fact, into this book and we like to think that it provides a perfect snapshot of what makes tabletop gaming and the tabletop community so great. You can pre-order your copy right now by using diamond code APR181585. So head into your local comic or game shop today and tell them you want the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games. Thanks for watching Building Character. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.